Let's go. Hallelujah, man. That was incredible worship this morning, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Let's give it up for the worship team. Thank you guys so much. So much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. This is to make sure that the sermon is not dry. As dry as that joke, so. It was good? Okay. Praise God. Let's give it up to Jesus again. He is. Incredible, incredible. Want to congrats. We had a, then may not be here this morning, but we had, um, did a wedding yesterday for a couple from our church. Um, Shamika and Isaac, they're the newest kids on the block. All right, it was had a wonderful wedding there in Arima. And then I w- came back here to the church and saw the ladies were having an incredible time. Yeah. Amen. And dear, I want to stand. I just want to thank you for doing such a good job. Yeah. Yes, my wife is in charge of the, the women ministry and she always puts on a good um, meeting for them few times through the year, but yesterday were some great giveaways. I think there was an AC giveaway yesterday for the winner. Who won it? Anella. Wow, yes. When I walked in, she was looking like a Christmas tree. Right, and um, she went home with an AC unit, but they had a great time. Um, Enough food for the men to receive afterwards. This is pretty good. All is good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hmm? Oh, and Johnny and Sophie had the anniversary yesterday. Congrats, congrats. Anybody with eye issues? Problem with their eyes? You got hit in the eye? Problem with your eye? I want all the people with eye issues to stand. Because Friday, the enemy tried to take out my eye. So I want to pay him back. I'm getting some eyes healed. All right? I was in the yard and um, trying to kill an African snail and walked through straight. <laughs> Straight into a dry branch, went straight into my eye. And I had to go to the doctor and stuff on my eye. And you probably wouldn't tell because the intercessors were praying. <laughs> right? And, um, but I want to I, I um, see some eyes get healed this morning. All right? So let's stretch your hands to all those with eye issues. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you right now, God, for your healing anointing. And Father, Lord, I speak healing to eyes this morning. Every eye problem, leave right now in Jesus' name. I declare perfect eyesight in the name of Jesus. I command cataracts, glaucoma, all of that to leave right now in Jesus' name. Any sort of stigmatism right now, I command to stop and go right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And let's thank God for doing it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me know. Let me know if there's improvement. Amen? Let me know. Cool. So I do want to continue this morning on the topic of peace. This morning will be a bit of a a Bible thumping morning, but we'll move quickly. Amen? Amen? Let's begin um, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. It says here, therefore, this is Paul speaking here to the 
the church at Ephesus. He says, therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. How much of you guys know you've been called by God? Every one of you have been called by God. Every one of you. Now look what he says here to every one of us who have been called by God. He said, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances, allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, building yourself together with, with what? With what? With peace. So we are called to God, and one of the reasons for us being called by God is to live in harmony, live together as one in peace. So we can live together, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean we live in peace. So he wants us not just to come together, but come together and live in peace. And one of the characteristics for us to live by in order for us to have peace is that we must be humble. Go back to, to, to verse 1. I just want to show you guys that again. Um, Actually, uh, on verse 2, the next verse, he said, always be, always be, always be. The last time I checked the Greek meaning for the word always, it means always. Amen? Always be humble. So humility is a requirement of us for to become a people of peace, we must be humble. Amen? One of my favorite verses is Micah 6 and verse 8. If you look at that real quick. It says here, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord, what? Require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk how? Humbly with your God. So this verse shows us that God has this as a requirement for us. A requirement. In other, in other words, like, like when you go and apply for a job, sometimes they ask you for requirements. And if you don't have the requirements, you will not get the job. Sometimes you apply for a, a, a visa or, or, for your, or for a credit card or, or, or for your ID. And they always ask you for requirements. And if you don't meet those requirements, you can't get what you want. And God is saying, this is my requirement of you. God is requiring of us to be humble. Amen. Why? Because this requirement is going to allow us to get the job done. Because we've been, we've all been called to do something and something great in the earth. But the requirement for us to walk in the greatness that God wants us to walk in is humility. I'm going to prove that to you because God used two people in, 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 in the Bible to bring his covenant to the earth, right? The first person that he used to bring the first covenant, what we call the old covenant, is Moses. But look at this, this verse about Moses in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, now the man Moses was what? Was what? Very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Moses was the most humble man on the earth in his day. 
That, that is why God was able to use him to usher in the, the, the covenant to the earth. The man that brought the requirements of a, of a heavenly lifestyle in the Old Testament was Moses, but look what was his main characteristic. He was very humble. Who did God use to bring the new covenant? Look what he says about Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. It says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am. I am what? This is what Jesus said. I am the great I am. I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. He's saying, I am. In other words, he is the personification of what humility looks like. This was the characteristic of Jesus. And because he was humble, God was able to use him to bring in the new covenant. Which we live by today was brought in by a man who is humility. Amen? So God wants us to be humble. Even Paul talks about humility in, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. This is what he says. He says, since God chose you, turn to the and say, God chose you. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must, not maybe or if, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, and what? Humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. You must forgive others. You must forgive others. Am I scratching here? You must forgive. You must forgive. You must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let what? The peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. As members of one body, you are called to live in? You are called to live in? Peace. You are called to live in peace and always be thankful. But how are we going to live in peace? We have to be clothed with humility. Amen. Amen. So God wants us to be humble. So I want, to sh I want us to look at three aspects of humility this morning. One is that humility takes you to the highest position. Let me say that again. Humility takes you to the highest position. What is the highest position in the Bible? Some people believe the highest position is to be an apostle. All right? So let's look at what the apostles said about the highest position. Right? Look, look, look. Look at Romans chapter 1. Look. It says, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel. This is interesting. What did he call himself before saying what he's called to do? He said, I'm a servant. 
He said, I am a servant. You see, he's describing who he is so he can tell you what he does. You see that? I am a bond servant. Look at Philippians 1, verse 1. It says, Paul and Timothy, what? Bond servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. See that? He said, I'm a bond servant. I'm, I'm, I'm with these bishops here. <laughs> he could have called himself a bishop. He could have said, I'm, the, I'm the, the, the big apostle here with these bishops. He said, no, I'm the bond servant here with these bishops and deacons. Look at what James had to say. The brother of Jesus. In James 1 and verse 1, it says, James, a what? A bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, he brings greetings. He could say, I'm, I'm, I'm Jesus' brother. He could have said that. He said, no, I'm a bond servant. Look at what Peter says. Second Peter, chapter 1 and verse 1. Simon Peter, a what? A bond servant. An apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by, by the righteousness of our God and, and Savior Jesus Christ. So he calls himself a bond servant even before describing what, what he does. He's an apostle. Amen. So the highest position for believers is the position of a servant. Can I say it again? The highest position for all believers is the position of a servant. Amen. 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 Look what Jesus says in Matthew 20, verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. So many times people try to get a position only so that people can serve them. But Jesus came not so that people can serve him. He came so he can serve us. Isn't that powerful? You see, too many of us get caught up in a title or what we are called to do instead of what we are called to be. Let me, let me say, we are human beings. Not human doings. Amen? We should be focusing not on the titles, but we should be focusing on who we are and what we are called to be. You know, it's... It's funny how people demand titles. Yeah. I know I told this already a, a few times, but I'll say it again because it fits in real good. One time I was coming to church here during the, during the day, coming to the office. So I came out of the car and right, I was stepping out of the car to get in the door, the front door of the church. A car pulled up. I was popping. Pop, pop, pop. So I looked around. And there was a lady there. And she was driving a car. And, and she said, Pastor Kirk, come, come, come. So I came across. She, she wasn't a member of this church. But I guess she knew me. And she said, I have someone to introduce you here. And it's Prophet, prophet so-and-so. And he, he's the, late, the guy. He said, she said, Prophet so-and-so. He stopped her. He said, oh, 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 no, 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 no. Not Prophet. 
apostle. And I'm like, hi, apostle. It's like we get so caught up in these titles. Guys, it's not about the title. It's not about the title. It's about the function. It's about what you do. You know, I, 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 I'll be honest with you guys. I'm good with you guys calling me Kirk. I, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with that. Amen. You don't have to put a title before my name. Serious. I mean, I know people do it out of respect, but you should be able to still respect one another without giving the people a title. Is that okay? I'm not saying you don't have to call people by their title, but it is not a necessity. And you don't need that to feel like you're somebody. You have to know who you are. You are a child of God. <laughs> Amen. Your identity is not in what you do. Your identity is in whose you are. Look at Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Your identity is not also in what you own. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15 says, Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. He's not saying that you shouldn't have things, but don't allow these things to have you. Because if you allow these things to have you, you will form your identity in things. Amen. What's... <laughs> What's really funny, there was one time I had a wedding to do on a Saturday and my car is never as clean as, as Indira's car. Indira will go as far as to clean her own car just to keep it clean. So I asked her to use her car to go to the wedding because I didn't want to show up to the wedding in a my car. <laughs> and of course, I have a nice Honda Vizel and she has a Benz. <clears throat> so, anyhow, after the wedding, I did a wedding coming back. I decided to, you know, sometimes weddings can be long. And on my way back, I decided to stop off at Starbucks to engage in one of life's greatest pleasures. <laughs> A cup of coffee. <laughs> so I went into Starbucks, and because I was coming from a wedding, of course I'm dressed in a suit, and it's probably the only time you'll see me in a suit. One of the few times. Um, so I was all dressed in a suit, and I came in the Starbucks lineup for my coffee, and I met a friend on my way in. So I said, hi, how you doing? He said, hi, good, good, good. So I got my coffee, I went, out and I got a, my, went back in the car and went home. And he texts, I got a text from him. Pastor Cook, I just want to praise God, because God has taken you to such a high level. You are now driving a Benz. <laughs> what he did though was driving a borrowed Benz <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> but why should you judge me? Because of what I am driving. Yeah. 
They are criminals that drive better cars than that. Come on. You know, we judge by what people have, but we should be recognizing them by, because of who's there. Amen. You should recognize people because they belong to Jesus. Amen. My next point is this. Humility takes you also to the highest place. Mark chapter 9, verses 33 to 35. It says, After they arrived at Capernaum and settled in a house, Jesus asked his disciples, What are you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they were arguing about which of them was the greatest. Some people believe this was the first pastor's conference. <laughs> he sat down and called the 12 disciples over to him and said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Humility, taking the last place, is what will get you to the highest place. You see, success in the kingdom is not how much people you can get under you. It is how much people you can get over you. Should I say that again? Yes. Success in the kingdom is not how much people you can get under you. It's how much people you can get over you so you can serve. But I'll tell you this, guys. You know, the leadership of this church, we do everything from an agreement. You'll never hear, you'll never hear me say things like, I did this and I did that. You always hear us say, we did this. We made this decision. Because it's not, about, it's not about I. It's about us. Amen? It's about us. And honestly, guys, there's nothing that I could be proud about. You know why? Because it has all been God. It has all been God. When I look at my life, it's like, man, if, if, if God can use me, <laughs> he could use anybody. Anybody. I, was, I felt at times in my life I was nothing going nowhere to happen. <laughs> but God did it. And all, why, how did God, all we did was co-labor with him. And he does the work. All we did was humble ourselves and say, God, you lead he does it, guys. The key is humility. Look at Philippians 2, verses 3 to 9. Or to 8. Yeah. It said, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be what? Be what? Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. I want to pause there. It's important for us to 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 tell him and say, you know, you, you look better than me. <laughs> Come on, Jose, you can tell him dear that. Come on. He's like struggling. <laughs> <laughs> it 
said, so don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in, in human form, he what? He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal death on the cross. He says, let this attitude of Jesus be ours. To be willing to humble ourselves. Amen. And you see, the thing is, when Jesus humbled himself, didn't he not get a name that is above every name? <laughs> because he humbled himself. Because he, he went down, he got the highest position. Amen. You see, guys, the way to go high in the kingdom is to go low. If you want to have authority, you must get under authority. If you want to receive more, you have to give more. And if you want to live, you have to be willing to die to self. It's, it's, it's almost like an upside down kingdom. <laughs> it's all opposite in the kingdom. If you want to help more people, serve more people. Look at Job. Look at Job 5 and verse 11. He says, he sets on high who? Who are lowly. See that? And those who mourn are lifted to safety. Look at Luke 1 and verse 52. He says, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt the, the lowly. Matthew 23 and verse 12. It says, whoever exalts himself will be humble. And who humbles himself. See? The way up is down. It's the truth. It's the truth. 1 Peter 5 and verse 6, he says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may what? Exalt you in due time. Again, guys, the way up is down. Well, you might be saying, but Pastor Kirk, Pastor Kirk, I don't want to be seen. <laughs> I don't want to be exalted. I just want to stay humble. But let me tell you guys this. When you humble yourself, God is going to cause you to be seen, not so that you can be seen, it's so that you can be in a position now to lift others higher. That's the reason. He's not exalting you so you can get the glory. <laughs> He's exalting you so you can give him more glory by helping others come up. Amen. Amen. Point number three. Humility also gets you the highest prize. The highest prize. Look what Paul says here in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. He said, I press towards the goal for the what? The prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There is a prize, guys, that humility will bring to us. And he shows you before this statement what he did so he can press towards that prize. Look at, look, look, look from at, at, verse, at verse 5, from verse 5 to 8. 
Look what he says here. He said, I, Paul, right, I was circumcised when I was, when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel. I'm a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a real Hebrew. Real, real Hebrew. If there were any one, if there were any, sorry, if, if ever there was one, I was a member of the Pharisees, that's the religious elite, who demand the strictest obedience of the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. As for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as rubbish, garbage, so that I can gain Christ. Actually, the, the actual word there for garbage is, is the word for um, animal excretion. In other words, it was poop. That's the actual word. If you, if you look at the King James word, it said dung. Quite usually for us dung. All right. Sorry, I got too graphic. Sorry. See, but that's what he was saying. He said, all these things that I've achieved, when it compares to knowing Jesus, they're nothing. They're rubbish. It's not that we don't need them. It's not that they're not important. But in comparison to knowing Jesus, they're, they're nothing. He is the great prize. Knowing him is the great prize. Amen. Look what he goes on to say in verses 9 and 10. He said, and become one with him. I no longer count on, I, don't, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him and share in his, in his death. This is the great price, to know Christ and to experience his resurrection power in our lives. That's the great price, guys. But for us to be able to achieve and press in to this great price, we must be willing to not identify in the things that we have achieved in the natural. Our identity must be in him. Amen? It must be in Him. The way we can know Him more is by counting everything else as dog poop. Amen? You know, just last night... <clears throat> After the ladies' meeting, a young man stepped into the, to the church. And he was all in tears when he was talking to Hosea. Because he was in an accident that he almost died in last November. And he was a, one of the early members of this church back in the day. I think we baptized him as a kid. And he said, Pastor, I got into that accident, and all I saw was a light. All I saw was a light. He said, I know it's God's mercy that I'm still alive. You know, I, he said, I left the church. I walked in sin. He 
He said, and to fight down to get cars and women and drinking. And he said, but you know what? All that is nothing. And he was just in tears last night. Guys, the great prize is knowing him. Amen. It's knowing him. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Look what God is saying here. He said, The high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one says this, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I want that to soak in. This is who God, the high and lofty one, this is who he dwells with. The contrite and the humble. He said, I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revived the courage of those with repentant hearts. Psalm 138 and verse 6. It says, Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble. But he keeps his distance from the proud. You see, when we mature as a believer, we should be getting more and more humble. If you are not getting more humble, you're really not getting closer to Jesus. Actually, you're moving further from him. You see, you can get older, but that doesn't mean you get mature. You're just getting older. Because the sign of maturity in the kingdom is humility. Amen. I want to end by <clears throat> focusing on Paul, who many and myself believe that he was the greatest apostle. He was. The highest of all the apostles. I mean, this guy wrote more than half of the New Testament. And he was even caught up into the third heavens. And he said things were revealed to him that he couldn't reveal to us because we won't understand. Which is amazing to me because a lot of the things he, he revealed to us, we still don't understand. <laughs> This guy had so much revelation. But I want you to see what he says about himself. Paul died in 66 AD, but he was saved in 36 AD, which means that he was a Christian for about 30 years, right? After 20 years of being a Christian, he wrote to the to the Corinthian church, and this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 9. So this is 10 years before he died, right? He said, for I am the least of all the apostles. I am not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. He said, I am, I am an apostle, but I'm the least of them. This was 10 years before he died. Three years later, seven years before he died, he wrote to the Ephesians church. And this is what he says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. He says, to me, whom I'm less than the least, of all the saints. This grace was given that I should preach among the, the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. 
So 10 years before he died, he's the least of the apostles. Three years before he died, he's not the least of the saints. Look what he says one year before he died when he wrote to Timothy from prison. First Timothy chapter 1 of verse 15, he said, This is a faithful saying, unworthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So 10 years before he dies, he sees himself, himself as the least of all the apostles. Three years before he died, he sees himself the least of all the saints. One year before he died, he sees himself as a chief sinner. Why? Because he compare, he keep comparing his, his life with who Jesus is. Because he's looking, he's assessing himself. This is who I really am without him. Guys, without him, we are nothing. It's the truth. It's the truth. Without him, we are nothing. So I want us to choose to live a life of humility and to see from God's perspective, to have a heavenly perspective. You know, this morning when we were doing worship, if we would go ahead and stand, the musicians would come. If you all would stand. <coughs> You know, when Sterling was leading, I was that part of that you, you saying that you're holy. You're holy. You know, I sort of looked at the angels around the throne. That's what they cry out Holy, holy, holy. You see, they cry out holy because there's none like him. To be holy means to be, to be separated. He is so separated from everything else. <laughs> there's none like him. There's nothing like him. no one like him. He humbled himself. And he positioned himself to become a slave. He gave his life. He went to the lowest place. He went to hell, guys. He went to hell so we can go to heaven.
it will always it will always be about you it will always it will always be about
sense in my spirit as we humble ourselves and allow the peace of God to rule in our lives, God is going to release to us a power we have never walked in before. Let me say it again. I believe that God is getting ready to release a power for us to walk in because we have chosen to humble ourselves and walk in peace. How would you guys ready to walk in greater power? Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to show us the way, the truth, and the life. A life of peace that brought him power. So, Father, right now, God, I thank you, God, as we clothe ourselves with humility. As we clothe ourselves, as we put on humility this day, God, we thank you, God, for your peace reigning in our lives so we can walk in the power that you died for us to walk in. That anointing, that manifestation of your power that's going to destroy yokes, that's going to destroy bondages. Father, we thank you, God, for causing us to walk in greater power because of your great peace. You said it's the God of peace that crushes Satan under our feet. God of peace. God of peace. Live among us. Walk through us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, God, for doing a great work among us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give it up to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just one more thing, guys. Let's, with all eyes closed and heads bowed. If you are here this morning, they say, Kirk, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to walk in his peace. I want to experience his power. If that's you this morning, you've never given your life to Christ, just go ahead and lift your hand up. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you're here this morning, you want to give your life to Jesus. I see that hand. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, let's all pray with that person. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of my sins. Father, forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me the blood of Jesus. Make me your righteousness. In Christ Jesus, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your grace so I can walk upright before you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's thank God for that person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, man. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, guys, we're dismissed. Love you guys. Don't forget we have the prayer servants to the front here. If you need prayer for anything, they're here to pray with you and see you get your breakthrough. If you need a prophetic word, the prophetic team will be on this side ready to give you a word. For God bless you. Have an incredible day. Love you guys.